Hello everyone, it's Toby Southgate here. I'm the CEO of Forshman and Bodenforce. And I'm here in Cannes at Sport Beach, not for the first time, with the wonderful Atifa Hargrave Silk, the managing director of Haymarket Media Asia. Hi, again. Hi, hi Toby. Can thank we you call so this a tradition yet? We can, yes. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, the first question I want to ask, managing director of Haymarket Media Asia. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, actually, that we were here first time around and a lot has changed as always there's asia speed which is already pretty fast um, and then i think the last couple of years a few dynamics in the region that we might want to touch on what have you seen what's changed in the last 24 months since we were last in Cannes talking about dynamics in marketing in asia well of course when we were last here together um, asia had just come out of covid and if you remember some of the markets uh, hong kong china were a lot slower coming back into the rest of the world uh, so a lot of that, I think, impacted where we are today. So some markets are moving incredibly fast. If you look at Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, racing ahead. And then there's others that are still, you know, getting those gears um, restarted. So that would be China, definitely, for one of those. Yeah, and that's an interesting point. And, and I keep reinforcing it to colleagues from all over our group and our clients, too. It's easy to sit somewhere else in the world and look over to the east and think Asia is of one common homogenous region and of course it, it's really not it's perhaps one of the most diverse parts of the world talk about that for a moment because the interface between consumers brands and the geographies that they come from or represent or that they want to communicate in what what do you see as emerging trends or, or, or new developments that the rest of the world should be aware of yeah, it's such a good point because uh, we really believe there's no more there, there is no asia pacific how do you define asia pacific you don't Every market in the region is almost um, really unique in its identity, in its culture. And in, within some of those markets, you've got multiple languages, you've got multiple religions as well. So Asia is very, very complex. And I think from a brand or marketing perspective as well, you can't go in with one strategy. So you see that shift also happening with uh, marketing budgets. You see it with marketing structures. Um, and also on the agency side, actually. So those regional roles um, are still there, some of them, but more of the decision-making, more of the activations are taking place with the local markets. Um, but that puts a lot more pressure on brands to really understand the cultural nuances of each of these countries um, that they might be operating in, and then to make sure that the marketing is truly relevant to the consumer in those markets. Um, and as you said, the markets are so diverse so a lot of fast changes where you've got young populations you've got mobile first you've got a lot of investment and time and money going into social and social commerce for instance and then you've got other markets which are, have aging populations for instance and you've still got somewhere like japan where tv or print still gets a lion's share of spend interesting there's there's a great point in there about the adoption of technology which in some markets, particularly if they've historically been referred to as emerging or developing, can be transformatively fast and can leapfrog certain stages of a traditional or Western evolutionary cycle. What, what are some great examples of that? What, 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 what markets perhaps specifically might we consider and what channels or what technologies might we want to let people be aware of? Yeah, I guess social commerce is the big one to talk about. Um, in some markets, you know, it's the, the investment that's going in from the brand's perspective as well. So if you look at L'Oreal in Indonesia, for instance, they've created this huge site which is just dedicated to using creators and driving the social commerce space. Um, and a lot of investment is going into that as well. Um, but TikTok, um, obviously some of those trends are translating coming out of Asia and going global as well. Um, yeah. If you zoom out a little more broadly, um, and one of my, I'm not sure if it's a favorite or a least favorite example, but global technology and content distribution platforms, and the example is Squid Games, I'm gonna go with. Uh, Netflix is able to experiment very quickly by looking around its international markets, picking up what was local content developed for a local market, and to jump on trends and scale that's a creative idea, it's a piece of content delivered over a creative channel. 
uh, and scale those ideas very fast. You know, wild international success, unexpected, cultish for a period, everybody was talking about it. Um, what can other brands, more you know, consumer products, automobiles, cosmetics, what can other categories learn from that notion of experimentation and learning at speed? One, I think one shift has to be in the mindset. So knowing that the center of universe is, is not in Europe or it's not in the US, actually, there can be great ideas coming from anywhere. So once you start looking at, looking at it through that lens and you've got ideas that are taking shape in one market in Asia, for instance, and then experimenting with that in the market and being able to export it, that's where you get a huge amount of success and you get ideas that are really scalable across geographies too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not picking on any individual client or category here, but uh, there's a lesson of speed, isn't there? Netflix is a new era company that's able to react and respond very quickly. Perhaps some big established brand owners need to relax and experiment a little bit more, be comfortable with, with moving at speed and taking decisions, experimenting in a region that allows it. And perhaps they themselves can find things that are succeeding in one place and export them outside of that individual market. Is that something that, that you'd like to see, a little bit of relaxation? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see that, you know, embracing the fear almost that it's okay, let's experiment, and if we fail, let's fail fast, but let's put some of our time, effort, and budget towards that innovation, because that's where great ideas and success will come from. Mm -hmm. But I think we're not there yet, so you're seeing some pockets of it where brands or marketers and agencies as well are being brave enough to, to go and test ideas, but yep. that's something that we need to see more of. And once we see more of that, that's when you see great work coming out. You'll see Asia winning a lot more lions, hopefully in the future as well. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that. You said great ideas can come from anywhere. Absolutely true. Um, there are, from a rest of the world perspective, some you know, traditional centers of creative excellence in New York, London, uh, perhaps you might say some cities in Latin America, Brazil for a period. Uh, Miami, actually. Um, in Asia, what are the hidden gems? What, what are the things that people might, outside of Shanghai, Singapore, where else should we be looking for, for great creative talent? Because there is an awful lot out there. Yeah, there is huge amount of talent in Asia. Um, India, there's some great talent um, coming out from that market in particular, um, especially when it comes to music, when it comes to film, um, and you, you see some of those ideas translating across the rest of the region as well. Thailand, fantastic humor in the work that's being created, but you don't see so much of that talent moving outside of Thailand yet, actually, that I think is quite interesting. So there's some markets where talent um, tends to, uh, I suppose, transcend borders, you could say. You see it from China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, certainly, but there are other markets such as Vietnam or um, Thailand and Indonesia as well where it does tend to be quite insular in a way, and those ideas and those uh, the creative people as well aren't moving across borders as much as we'd like to see. Sure. I think we can perhaps stimulate that. Agencies, clients, you know, your section of this industry as well, talking about it, writing about it, exposing great stories. We have uh, a team of interns from Forshman Singapore uh, who are here this week. They've, they've never been to Europe before, but their university, Nanyang Technology University, has sent them out here as their own little experiment, they won an internal competition. We're going to talk to them about what they can take back. And, and what do you think would, would be the message that you'd like that 22-year-old creative team to take back to Singapore and talk about as their reflection on, on this week celebrating the best of creativity globally? Do you know what an incredible experience? I can't imagine if I was just out of university and being given the opportunity to come to a place where you've got the world's most creative people, the most innovative brands coming together to talk about the future of this business. Um, and I think they're gonna be really inspired when they come here. And they're gonna see that this is an industry worth investing in, investing their time in and building a career in because so much of it is changing, but that also opens up so many different doors for them. Yes, I, I, that's it's wonderful. It's incredible experience at such a young age it's also a great reminder that the world of creativity the world of marketing uh, advertising is is one discipline within that but there are an awful lot of other areas to explore it's not only about the historic and traditional 
discipline or vertical of advertising. We're here on, on Sport Beach. We've got a diversity of clients, a diversity of contributors, some great guests. Um, and I think encouraging people to see across the breadth of opportunity in marketing is also a little analogous actually to thinking about the wider opportunities across a region rather than the verticality of a single of a single country. I think stimulating that is something that we can all do. We've been here a few times uh, in our lives. We can give some of that back to the 22 year olds, encourage them. It, it might secure a different dialogue with an emerging generation of students making those kinds of choices as well. Because they have so many choices. We, this is just one industry for them to pick when they, when they get out of university and they've got those degrees. So how do we make it something sustainable that they want to be part of? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to say thank you. Uh, I hope we'll be doing this again, perhaps next year or the year thank after. Uh, is, is there one, one final message that you'd like to, uh, to send to our audiences representing your part of the world and giving us the encouragement to spend more time thinking beyond the boundaries and the barriers that we, we see in front of us in our markets? I think it's, um, I think it's really having an open mind and looking into individual pieces of work looking into individual markets as well to understand what makes these things tick mm -hmm. because when you're looking at it from just a general lens you're not going to see the beauty and the opportunity um, within each part of Asia because Asia is such a complex market as well um, so I would suggest take some time you know especially there's some great work that's coming out of the region uh, from the from your agencies as well so explore some of that because some of those ideas are something that you can definitely learn from Brilliant. Atifa, thank you so much. Lovely to talk to you again. You Thanks too. very much. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Good.